Proverbs 24, uh, as you well know, we use adultery, uh, marriage, divorce as uh, cornerstones, which are covenants to God. It's an easy revealer to see if you're with God or not, because it's against the command of Most High. Uh, it's fools in their folly, the deep pit. Uh, as you well know, a fool is a... a Somebody who doesn't search for the truth, who doesn't care to rely on truth. Um, evil, wicked is them that know the truth, but won't be reproved. Um, hence, a man in adultery has fallen in a deep pit. He cannot return. He is against the Lord God. Um, so, uh, let's see, what else? Uh, always sifting. Uh, it's uh, anytime you see ruler wealth, uh, you need to be thinking spirituality, invisible things. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. For a man, there is only faith, hope, and love. So the virtues, the powers are invisible. Life, blood, uh, they're manifest in physical ways, such as blood, um, which has life in it, which is a spirit bridge, whatever. Uh, so you well know that the tradition is 31 Proverbs, one for every day of the month. Um, today is the 24th. Uh, so let's go ahead and pray in. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you as a humble servant and slave to your love and will, asking that you hear our prayers, forgive our sins, um, that you guide us and lead us, teach us in truth, reprove us in truth, always let us move to truth. Never let us define to you, but letting you divine, define to us, not letting us eat of the fruit where we decide, but where you command us, where you reprove and teach us. Never let our heart, us harden our he hearts or our necks like in the day of sin, when our fathers have provoked you and you have killed off entire nations and generations, uh, which is easy to see your hand upon the world. Let us read from your book of life and your holy scriptures with wisdom understanding and open heart for your sake for your name's sake for christ's sake and our posterity amen proverbs 24 be not thou envious be not thou envious against evil men and neither desire to be with them evil is those that won't be reproved who won't adhere to the commands of God Most High. An adulterer would be an evil man, hence fallen in the deep pit. Um, somebody who will submit you to an idol made by another man is an evil man. Somebody who, who will obey an idol over the living Lord God, who will get an idol from another man, still kill, shoot, and destroy you, but won't adhere to the living God. This is an evil man, an unreproved, spoiled, hard-hearted, stiff-necked man who will obey idols and not the living God. 24. For their heart studies destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. Uh, mischief is backbiting, murmuring, rumors. Um, um, and they study destruction. Uh, again, an evil man is one that will bow you down to an idolater. So he'll t he's, he's a man that will take a death oath with his um, mother of his children and then will get an idol from a stranger and bow his his spouse, his mother's wife down to this or, or a wife that will do it to a man. They study destruction. All their wisdom, all their knowledge is a tomb. Uh, it's Egypt's tomb. It's works. It's labors of dead works. It's trusting in idols, not in the word, not in faith. It's mischief. Um, it's They'll literally take you to jail for a personal choice, a drug that you made or something you did in treason to the Fourth Amendment, which says they have to have a warrant and a probable cause. They can't just search you, take your property. It, it, no matter if they make an idol saying you can't have that property that's idolatry that's uh, against the fourth and sixth amendment uh, that, that says that you get to face your flesh and blood accuser they study in these mischiefs they study in in deceit black magic rebellion uh which is witchcraft to god any idol made by man to rule over another man is witchcraft and rebellion to god because you're saying that man can supersede that which god made you're against death oaths you you're against family you'll profess family as family like an adulterer when it's not family uh, blood life death though this is the truth this is where the family is 
Uh, so these are unreproved hard artists, stiff neck evil. Uh, they study destruction. They talk of mischief. They they talk of bills above, uh, which are the bills. They pay their bills. They buy their house. They pay their boats, their cars. It's it's mischief. Uh, all to do evil and justify themselves, such as Cain slaying Abel. Twenty three or uh, twenty four three. Through wisdom is a house built, and by understanding it is established. Now, what is understanding? What is the beginning of understanding? It is the fear of the Lord. What, what is the beginning of wisdom? The fear of the Lord. And so when you fear the Lord, you reverence him. You, you obey him. You won't obey idols. You won't be unfaithful. So say your wife cheats on you and you want to get a new wife. Well, you by judging her in adultery, then to commit adultery... You have no knowledge, no wisdom, no understanding. You you don't stand. You used their not standing to you not to stand. You don't understand. You get what I mean? You, you're not you're not standing. You're not understanding. To understand is to stand. And when you take their infidelity, they're not standing so that you don't stand. You have no wisdom and you have no understanding. Hence, your house gets blown over. Hence, um, you have forsaken the invisible house of the Lord, the virtues, the pillars of life that God builds on, the invisible line, the true, the true vine, um, the invisible things of God. Uh, Hebrews 11.1 1, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Um, Hebrews 11.6 For it's impossible to please God without faith. That is to endure for those that go before God know that God is and that he rewards them that diligently seek him. Diligence means to stand fast, to stand. And so if you don't stand, you're not in understanding, which is why Proverbs makes it very clear. Anybody that's in adultery that has put away their wife, married another or married another man's wife has fallen in a deep pit. He does not understand. He is unfaithful. He has taught his kids to not stand. He has taught them blasphemy, adultery. He has taught them to swear to death and then lie and use legal ball all to use bills above. All these things that are not of virtue, that are not of standing. They're passing whims of idols with no knowledge, no understanding. Verse 4. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Fidelity, truth, uh, loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, personal courage. Those are the seven army core values. Those are from Plato's uh, uh, values. Those are what is listed as Christ having power. When the woman touched his robe, he says, power has went out of me. This is wisdom. I mean, uh, not wisdom. This is uh, virtue. It's, it's virtue. It's the invisible things. It's the seven pillars. Loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, personal courage, uh, fidelity, meekness, kindness, uh, truth. All these are founded off the cornerstone of truth. Um, and, and so to build on your house of truth, as Christ says, if you don't build on me, it blows over. If you don't build on me, you're lying and it's going to be brought to the truth. If you don't build on me, your, your lies will be uncovered no matter what. And, and if you continue in resistance, then what he does is he puts a millstone around your neck and grinds you down so that everybody, so that it becomes dust and everybody knows of your wicked sins, of your adulteries, of your blasphemies, because you carry his name and because you won't suffer to get the kids to the truth. He grinds you down like a millstone. Um, And by knowledge uh, shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Seek you first the kingdom of heaven. Uh, this is very important because Christ tells you, if you don't build on me the truth, the way, the life, it's going to be destroyed. Uh, as Solomon says, vanity is but a time and wickedness is worse. So if you're just out running around boasting in idols and not using God's name, that's vanity. You're, you're going to die. Everything you do is death. It's gone. But wickedness is worse, meaning it's not just going to fly by. He's going to fry your ass in eternal fire 
because you thought you could teach the kids blasphemy using his name because you couldn't just be vanity because you just couldn't be honest to your kids and be like i'm just a swear to death liar kids no you had to bring god's name into it to try to establish and justify your filthy ass sin to justify your coward ass ways to betray your spouse you had to, you couldn't just be vanity so you had to build your house on blasphemy, on wickedness, uh, not on, on, on wisdom or understanding, not on truth and fidelity, not on holding firm to covenant, uh, covenant breakers. This is what Paul talks about in Romans, where they take you to the law to commit adultery because like to say that you committed adultery so they could divorce you and marry another to commit adultery. To excuse one and accuse another. Legal law, black magic, witchcraft, compressions, idle houses, no virtue in word. No, nothing that they say can be established because they are in a lie. Any religion that has a lie in it, if you're a liar doing religion, it's unaccepted. It's not accepted by God. In fact, it's counted against you. Because if you will do your religion and make it look good for your kids, and you won't do it in truth, then you teach them lying hypocrisies. So you build a house not on wisdom, not on understanding, not on truth, not on God, not on fidelity. And so your house must be taken away. Now, if you build this house and put your kids in it, you just murdered your kids. Do you understand? If you build a house and say, I'm a good religious man, I go to church on Sunday, and you teach your kids you're good, by your bills above your all your 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 slave mentality by obeying men in their cursed legal law that tore apart your own goddamn family and by goddamn I mean you goddamn them and you unrepentantly because you're already condemned goddamned condemned means damned damn condemned is what it means condemned by who by God so you're what goddamned so when you Come to, I mean, you can't placate and soften this shit. It's like, it's, it's, the other in the religion of, of Christianity. It's cruci it's the other religion in the world that calls you to crucifixion. You can go be a freaking Hindu and, and live your life all, all peace like if you want. But Christ is your peace, the truth. And Christ told you when you pick this up, the world's going to crucify you. What does he mean by this? They're going to destroy your family. They're going to come in idols. They're going to come like locusts. But stand firm for God will replace all the years of the locusts. Now locusts are bad enough to deal with. But when your own freaking spouse becomes the fucking locust, this shit fucking sucks. That's the wickedness. That's what comes with the curse. That's what comes with the recurse. That is, as Solomon says, vanity is but a time. But wickedness is worse. What, what, and what he's saying here is your house is not built on vanity. You're not just running around a stupid ass. You're proclaiming to know Christ. You're proclaiming to be with God. You're proclaiming to be in the faith of fidelity. You're doing wicked goddamn shit. Because your children are going to grow up thinking that God and Christ are unfaithful. And as soon as they hit the, the, the time to, to prove their fidelity to the family, they're going to bring in strangers, just like you did, to destroy your own family in death oath. And you're going to say it's good, which is a goddamn lie. You teach hypocrisy and adultery to little girls and kids to hate after what the f <laughs> so okay so we're gonna go on number five a wise man is strong yes a man of knowledge increases strength what does he mean by this the strength of the Lord is my strong tower the, the Lord is my strength the Lord in my weaknesses he is strong what he means is is to repent to truth, to hold fast in fidelity, to be on guard with the one God, to give your faith to God. Now, you can't say you're in faith to God when you're casting out your own spouse, stealing your own kids. That's unfaithful. But you see how y'all teach the hypocrisies to the kids. No, 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 kids. I'm in fidelity, but, 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 
But I'm not. And it's good. It's good because your opinion. You eat the fruit and think that you're goddamn good. You go went and got an idol and brought in a stranger to agree with you against the very spouse you shared 50%. You shared equality rights with. You went and got a stranger to break that apart. A stranger. Who's your public servant that made you rise like the ball, the bailiff says, all rise. So you get like a calling of God. Like it says in, in Psalms, like all of the Holy Scriptures, rise, arise, arise. When God calls you, but y'all do it for a stranger who then makes an idol while you swear away Christ, telling your children you're with Christ and you're in the religion of fidelity to do infidelity. You brought in a stranger, so you brought the curse on your own family. And you teach it's good to your children. You, you're, you're not strong. You're weak. You're unfaithful. A, a strong man builds a strong... A wise man is strong. What is wisdom? Fear of the Lord, fidelity, strength, truth, standing fast through all trials. But only one did this perfectly. A wise man is strong, yea, a man of knowledge increases strength. Of knowledge, a fear of the Lord, which means they're going to throw other fears at you. Legal law compression, adultery, fornication. They're going to use uh, uh, doctors to fucking force drug you, to, to imprison you, call you crazy. For what? For sticking to your death off? That's what they do. That's what the ignorant do. That's how they prove the wise man is strong. Because they come in infidelity trying to mock you for fidelity. Trying to pretend to be faithful. Like they have knowledge or they have wisdom. Or they have any virtue whatsoever. They come to spread adultery to destroy the family like the wicked witch in Hansel and Gretel. They bring in strangers. They bring in idols. And all of it forgets where you come from. The blood life testimony. The truth. This is wisdom. This is strength. Your bill of rights. Your declaration. Your death oath. Your first one to your wife. To your spouse. To your kids. Because everyone after that, you moved in sin. You fell. You were not strong. Every man does this. And that's what Christ is. The, the truth. Crucified. So that when you come to him, you can see how every lie killed him. You took part. And you can still see God's forgiveness. But you must be in truth. You must be wise. Because any person that worships God cannot go about lying playing God. That will make no sense. You can't be a liar and be with God. You can't play God to other people made by God and say you're with God. You're a liar. You, 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 God's not a liar. You are. God cannot, will not, sorry, he can accept whatever. God will not accept your religion because you're a liar. Anytime you cannot die for the truth, you are still spiritually held back in kindergarten class. Now, what's amazing about this is it literally, on average, takes a human being about 30 years. But about 28 years, four turns of Saturn, to learn what a lie in truth is. And what it is revealed to them. And this is why most men get baptized at 30, because they accept the mission unto death, to hold to the truth. Now, how can an adulterer in infidelity be baptized in the name of fidelity? He's a liar, using God's name. It's so easy, like it's, it's retarded. You can't carry the name of fidelity in infidelity the name of truth while telling a professed lie. You're in a deep pit and no wisdom, no knowledge bears with you. God is not mistaken on this. If you cannot get the core, the blood life testimony, if you can't teach your freaking son to stand firm for his wife, the mother of his children, what the fuck are you going to teach that kid? How to be a, a, a snake. A slander, a backbiter, a murmur, a runner, a coward. A man that will use the word to excuse himself out of his own death oath. A liar of the most sacred things. 
You can't mix and mingle these. I mean, well, okay, so so if you're a Christian, what are you to the world? Faithful? True? No! You're an adulterer, a liar, a coward, according to God. It's what the whole book says. So, so what are you as a Christian to your kids? What do you teach them about Christianity? To pay bills to Bob? To go to work? Do you do you say, I work hard, I pay my bills, I, I'm, I work very hard, I don't listen to vain words of God, I don't sin from infidelity. You're, you're then Pharaoh from Exodus 5. Work hard, go back to work, don't be lazy. You're a slave, a liar slave for Pharaoh is what you teach your kids to be. Carry God's name of fidelity, serving and worshiping the Lord God alone, but make sure you pay bills above and legal ball all compression, straight out of Egypt, straight out of Syria and Babylon, straight out of Israel's root. Make sure you carry that, but never carry your word, your oath, your blood life testimony. Never ever stand firm for your family. If you won't stand firm for your family, what will you stand firm for? Nothing! Nothing! If you won't be faithful to the wife of your youth, your children, you won't, dude! You're a fucking liar! That's why God, that's why the Proverbs say that person is in a deep pit of darkness and cannot escape. Because they will literally say God is okay with their adultery. They will profess the power of God. And then deny it thereof, returning back to legal law idolatry, back to strangers ruling over them and their children. They will pay their bills. They'll do all wicked ma manner of black magic, idol witchcraft rebellion, boasting in the tomb of Egypt, working hard, which is exactly what Pharaoh says. Hence, God says, if you will only enter my rest, if you will stop putting brick upon brick and sin upon sin, if you will stop making a tomb and follow me, even if it be intense, like Abraham, you can't be in the Abrahamic faith while in adultery in a brick house. That's exactly what the Bible says is sin. You're in goddamn adultery. All you've done is built a tomb for your children. And God didn't kill him. You did. Because you couldn't just do your fucking dirt and not teach them God. You had to bring God into your life to blasphemy God's name. What you did was stop them from being born under condemnation just like you. What you did was stop them from getting to Christ. You offended the little ones from getting to Christ. What is Christ? The truth. The way. The life. The only to God. Fidelity. You had to make your path so crooked, you had to bring God and say, Oh, kids, I'm with God. Look look at me, blasphemy, and commit adultery. And God approves of this. But nowhere in the book, nowhere in all of life, in every religion around the world, every religion around the world is 100% sure on this. You cannot commit adultery and be with God. You can commit adultery, but you can't be with God. You are opposed now to your word, which is the word. You are now opposed to the community, to the children. For your own lust, your own greed, your own idolatries. You cannot be one and the same. This is why every prophet all through the Bible and every holy manuscript around the world preaches on adultery. Because it's the cornerstone test of all faith. Because if you cannot get it to your spouse of your youth, the mother of your children, and if you cannot get it to your children, there's not a fucking person in the whole world you're ever going to do it for. There is no one of more value to the children and to you. This is why God makes you one flesh. And then brings a trial to tear you apart. Because it is a test of mercy. Forgiveness. Fidelity. And to who? To the mother of your children. To the spouse of your youth. The parent of your child. If you can't get it there. You're not going to get it. 
Do you see why he tears you apart? Just like Adam and Eve, when they were one, male and female, he rips them apart. The word rib in Hebrew means a mirrored half. He rips them in half. That's what the ancient word in Hebrew means, to tear in half. Because remember, they were male and female in 127. Then in Genesis 2, so he rips them in half. So they, in their adversity, their cast downness, have to work together. Now, it's the same way. When God makes you a, 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 a father and a mother, or, or father, mother, when he combines you, and then he, if he, now you don't need to have the children because God's word is greater than the blood, okay? The word is above the blood. The word made the blood, life testimony. So the word is above the blood, okay? The word is everything. It, it's, it's, when God says it, it is so. You can profess his name all day long, and he cares a lot about his name, a whole lot. It's what David slayed the Philistine with. It's what Aaron's rod ate up Egypt with. But his word is what he looks for in a man. Hence, who shall stand in the congregation of the living in the assembly of God? He that hath not sworn deceitfully. What's swearing deceitfully? I swear to death, baby, I'll live you forever. And then break it. That's, that's, that's deceitful swearing. No, baby, I made it with you this time. Ha! <laughs> Teach the kids. I was God. You see the, the, the hypocrisy, the evil shit. You can't be with God. Faithful men die in the fires. Legal law compression is the fire. Uh, uh, degrees, jobs, cops, courts, adultery, all this is sin. And when you swear to honor and obey and love and cherish your wife through sickness and in health, every adultery is a sin. It's sickness. Every lie is a sin. It's a sickness. Everything that they do wrong is sin and a sickness. Now, here's the thing. Now, I know, I know, the same way that, that, that the, the all holy men know. If you're an adulterer, you're a goddamn liar. I, I don't trust you. I put no weight in anything you fucking say. Because if you cannot get it for your children and stand for it, yeah, I already know. You're a piece of shit fucking serpent liar. I know. How do I know? Because God tells me so. Because it's proven. Nowhere does God justify an adulterer. He must repent. He must repent. Now, there are adulterers that repent. Hosea's wife was one. Abraham and Sarah were one. David was one. You must repent. But if you stand in it, you're not with God. I already know you. And if you say you're with God doing it, dude, I, I, you seriously run a risk of me cutting your fucking tongue out. I'm not even kidding. And I wouldn't mind doing 10, 20, 30 years in prison for cutting a fucking blasphemer's tongue out. I'm telling you right now. I'll stand for that shit. Put me, mark me as faithful. Mark me as one who will cut a blasphemer's tongue out before we let him teach it to the children. I don't give a shit what legal law compression fucking idol y'all got making on. I got a God. I got a Lord. I got a national covenant of declaration to the truth. I've got all these things. I, I've got my idols. It's called the Bible. It's called the Declaration. It's called the Bill of Rights. It's called the Tanakh. It's called the Quran. I don't fucking stray from my idols. I know Aaron's staff. I cling to that. Because it always points to Moses' staff. I don't fucking bring in stranger fucking idols. I don't give a fuck what degree they got going on. How much money they paid for their education. How big their congregation is. How rich their shoes, their boat, and their house. I don't fuck you. Are you faithful in adultery? You're a fucking dumbass. And you want to say you're with God? See, shut the fuck up. This is Christianity. This is not some pussy fucking religion that you show up and you get what you want. This is stand firm fast. Don't move for idolaters, nations, fires. You stand before the whole power of the earth and the devil if you must. This is Christianity. And if you're baptized, that is what you do. You don't have to get baptized. You're saved by belief. Those that believe on the word of God are saved already. You can believe. Fear and tremble. Like the demons. Way to go. 
But to be baptized is to accept the mission of death. That is, I don't believe in Christ. I am a Christian. I am like Christ. I don't move. I stand in truth. I have my Aaron staff, my Moses staff, I have Christ as my helmet of salvation, my breastplate of righteousness, which is not mine, it's the truth, by holding firm to my oaths, to my family, my covenants, of mine and my father's. I don't do fucking whores that go about adulterizing, I don't do fucking whores, period. I, I do nothing but minister to them. I take none of their wisdom. I don't drink from a fountain of fucking adultery. I don't drink from a fountain of idolatry. I don't drink from the fountain of all legal law compression. When motherfuckers running around trying to tell me doing drugs is bad and they'll destroy my family. I got a gospel. I got a Lord in Christ. I got a Bill of Rights that says you're in fucking treason. I'm not a dumbass. I've got my gospel, Mark 7, 14 to 23, that says you're fucking defiled evil in a satanic scheme to literally remove me from my family. You're a lie. So, 24 is talking, build your house on truth and don't move. Lay your stone and stand. Six. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war. And in the multitude of counselors there is safety. Okay, what does he mean? Men? People? Your uncle? Your brother? Your sister? How about your preacher that preaches adultery is okay? No! How about all the judges, lawyers, Congress, in it? No! Those are men of the wall condemned. He's speaking of the eternal wise, of them that have already laid down their life for you. He's talking Dr. King, Malcolm X, Henry David Thoreau. He's talking Jefferson of Washington. He's talking Kunta Kinte. He's talking Father Hildago. He's He's talking Mother Teresa, St. Catherine. He's talking Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Paul, Peter, Muhammad. He's talking men that lay down their life for what they say. Good shepherds. These are your wise counsels. You know they're wise because they stand in truth. They're not morally fucking retarded. They've passed kindergarten class. They don't think lying as an adult is fucking cute. They don't find bullying being mean. You know what I mean when I say what I mean? Because I'm not so fucking mean to not mean what the fuck I say when I say what I mean. I'm not a fucking dipshit. I'm not a little fucking woman. I'm not a fucking kid. I'm a fucking man. I'm made for the truth like Enoch says. You men are coward fucking betrayers. Straight up, just like Isaiah. You men are weak, pussy lying motherfuckers. Oppressed by kids, ruled by women. Which is idols, kitty fucking any film, Philistines, Phila. Run in a fucking pyramid scheme of goddamn serpent shit that Franklin bust out. Uh, the serpent cuts it up. United we stand, divided we fall. Keep letting that fucking serpent run through and tell your goddamn lies. Stop that shit. Backbiting, murmuring. If they won't fucking man the fuck up, bring that shit to your face, they're in goddamn treason and blasphemy. They are cowards. They are exactly what God says he hates. It's the same shit they did to Moses, to Christ. We're being kids to touch him. This is like, give me the kid. Look, this is the kingdom of heaven. Those that suffer for the children, y'all read it as, King James says, suffer the children. That is, try to get them fucked. That is, play the any feeling game. That is, the Philistine way. That is, the Pharaoh's way. That is, legal law, law, compression, fear, hauntings, witchcraft, and small things, according to Solomon. So, when they bring in Christ, like, no, give me the king. This is the kingdom of heaven. Suffer the little children to come to me. Period. The truth. Now you read it as, so for the kids, tell the goddamn lie, let's run and manipulate, and y'all trust in the women getting oppressed by kids and ruled by women, like Isaiah says. Y'all are dumb as fuck. They're tearing apart families for while casting witchcrafts and getting kids fucking touched. I don't give a fuck if you touched a kid. I killed them. You're pussy shit to me. You're saints to me. I, I got heavy sin. 
Okay? And that's why God raises them up. And you can see in the scripture, he always raises one up when these Philistines and these any films come to fucking shut these pussy faggots up. Stand up. Stop being oppressed by them. And what Christ means is suffer the children to get the truth. That is, admit you were playing a fucking serpent stupid game and adults lies. Bring it in. Admit you fell for stupid shit and get the truth to the children so they don't fall prey to your fucking destruction. That's what Christ means. And if you don't, it's better a millstone be hung around your neck and you thrown into the bottom of the sea. And the millstone is the jackass. Uh, the, the big one that grinds you down, led by a jackass, which is what Christ rides into, into uh, Jerusalem on. It is, it is Christ riding in on the truth, those that stand fast. An ass, a uh, jackass always represents fidelity, truth. It represents stand fast. So, as he's going through, you, you stand fast in, in, in Christ. And that's those preachers, those teachers are going to grind your ass down. And the pressure of the sea is going to be on you. Repent now. Suffer for the children now. Because it's all going to come out anyways. Y'all were partaking, motherfucker. It's never not revealed. He told you this. You were found weak in the day of adversity. Which also says, uh, verse 6, 24-6. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war. And in multitude of counselors there is safety. No, safety is of the Lord alone. So what he's seeking is seeing if you'll seek men's approval or that of the blood testimony already given, the true counselors, the saints. Um, what's really awesome about six is if you know anything about Sun Tzu and the art of warfare, rule one to Sun Tzu's art of warfare is seek heaven. Then plan and then uh, deceive, deceive, deceive the enemy. Now, this is worldly, but what's funny is even when Sun Tzu picks up the battle, he tells you, seek you heaven, which is funny because it's the same thing Christ and the sages say. Seek you wise counsel, seek the blood testimony, uh, rely on wisdom, uh, build on, on wisdom, on understanding, on truth. Seek you first the kingdom of heaven, says Christ, uh, for no man wages a war goes to build anything without first counting the cost. Well, then you must be ready to die at any time, answering that you were faithful and truth to your spouse, to your family. You must be ready to give your account of fidelity to God at any given time. And if you're not looking to this account, you're a fool. You're not built for the, you're not in the wisdom of counselors. You're in the wisdom of betrayers, liars, idolaters, backpipes, any preacher, Christian preacher in the land, any minister that would ever remarry another, is an evil ass man, a thief and a liar carrying the name of the Lord God. For nowhere in the good book they say they follow can you find this approved. Nowhere. It is direct sin to the Lord. They are not seeking heaven. They are waging a war against you and not for you. The strangers you are now trusting over your spouses and those that have died for you in their name because the rank structure goes like this. God, spouse, wise men. God, spouse, wise men and women that have already proven faithful. Those are you, that's what you go to, which Christ is the head of the wise men. He's, he's really up there with God because he's the truth. He kind of finds out through it all. It's, it's, it's hard to explain. So verse 7. Wisdom is too high for a fool. He opens not his mouth in the gate. A fool is somebody who's not seeking wise counsel, who's not seeking to be true. Somebody who's not seeking to fulfill their oaths. This is a fool that will fall for anything around. An idol uh, will fall for legal compression, will fall for degree doctors, will fall for rules applied over them. They, they, they say, oh, well, they made a law. I better go get insurance. We're off of the poor. And they're a fool. Because wisdom's too high for them. They won't reach up and grab their Lord God. They won't turn their eyes to God. They'll turn their eyes to idols. To shit made by men, they will die just like them. And they'll let them rule over their kids and their wives with it. It's, it's 
too high for them. They won't, they, they, they're light, their thoughts are too light. They drift away. Their heart is not weighed in truth and fidelity, life and Christ and, and uh, the good things, the virtues of the world. 24.8. He that devises to do evil shall be called a mischievous person. Uh, devising to do evil, uh, to destroy your family, to make you come to court uh, with a ball if all rise and swear away Christ. Or all bail if all rise and swear away Christ. Make idols, witchcraft, and small things who will hold to bills above and below more than their death oath. These are them that are that that um, deviseth evil. Who will teach hypocrisies and lies to kids to remove the first promise to a long life? Who will teach kids to literally lie to their parents? Who will kill their kids? These are people that devise evil things. Verse 9. I've been one of these. Repent. Uh, verse 9. The thought of foolishness is sin. And the scorner is an abomination to men. A scorner is one that will judge you for the, for the drugs you do. For um, who will break apart your family uh, with with uh, idols and judgments, such as Mark seven fourteen through twenty three. Anyone that judges you for a drug you do is defiled evil, only to steal, kill. So they'll drag you to court, give you a piss test, you piss hot, they steal your kids, and they do exactly what Christ says they do. These are scorners. These are people that only deride, chide, subtle, sophisticated, go to blame you. Um, just just to accuse you and excuse themselves. They covet you. They want your wife, your kids. They want your possessions. They want you as a slave. They want you paying them in usury, um, taxations such as this. Verse 10. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. This is very important because I only know of one that never fainted, that being Christ. Um, uh, also, if you look in verse, um, in, in the Quran, the, the third surah about Jesus Christ, uh, where Muhammad tells you it's the messenger of God, he tells you born from a virgin, which you won't find in any other scriptures in the Bible, that clearly states virgin, it says young lady, um, um, I'm sorry, this is the, sorry, that may be inaccurate, um, so, no, with Isaiah, it's a young lady, but the, the what I mean is in the Aramaic language, this is one of the Aramaic Chaldean language, one of the only you're going to see uh, in the third Shrah where Muhammad calls him the virgin. Uh, this is the confirmation of the promise of Abraham. But in the third Shrah, Al Imran, which is Mary's last name, which is Christ's last name, Imran, all means like a, 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 a preparation of... of here is, or behold, um, or this is, the house of Imran, Mary's last name, which is Christ's last name, because Joseph wasn't the daddy. So, Yahshua al-Imran Hamasiak. And so, this is Mary's family, Zachariah's last name, Elizabeth's last name. Um, and then they trace the lineage down in Luke. This is Imran. Um, so, in verse 3155, Behold, as for those of you who turned away, from your duty on the day when the two hosts met in battle Satan caused you to stumble only by means of something that you yourselves had done that is true uh, we also see that by the Apostles that no man is led astray uh, by God that it's his own sin that God God brings him to but now God has effaced this sin of theirs he has erased it. He has taken it away. Verily, God is much forgiving and forbearing. Thank God for Yahshua. Well, that's me. I threw that part. Um, so, what I mean by this is exactly what the, the, the proverbian means in this. He says, if, you're, if you faint in the day of adversity, then your strength is small. Well, so was Abraham's. When he was called out, the father of the faith, he's called out, told to leave his kinsmen in Genesis 12. He takes Lot. Okay, his wife's understandable because everyone sold one flesh, but he takes Lot. And then he's given the land, and God tries him with a famine, and he leaves the land. 
And then he gives his wife away after God said he'll be with him. The, his adverse, his strength was small. His his strength, which is trust in God, which is fidelity, which is truth. This grows. You, you get mightier in it because it's not yours, it's God's. And so you faint in the day when you were tried. In the, in the day that the battle met, you forsook your own wife, your own spouse, your own kids, your own covenant. And you went with strangers. You were weak. And so he's saying that God forgives you and will it face this. Come back. Come back. Go back. Stand firm. Do what you have to do to get kids the truth. Um, and it doesn't matter what your other spouse does. This is God. God and none of the Holy Scriptures say, well, if your spouse does this, then you could do that. None of them say that. And where Christ does say it, it's a sifter. Because he says... What does he say before that? He says, if you put away and marry another, your heart is hardened. You are stiff-necked. Your heart is no good. You're spoiled. You're evil. You're not going to listen to God. So, he then says right after that, um, anyone that puts away and marries another is in adultery. Period. And then he says, but you could put away for fornication or for adultery in some translations. They're the same thing. Nothing changed. You can. But you're still in adultery. Nothing changed. His first command never changes. You only get caught. And so when you faint, it doesn't matter what the other spouse does. You already know the decree. You know what's right in your heart. You know what's true. You know what God revealed to you. So if you want to play with outsiders in a goddamn prideful game and burn your fucking soul in hell, eat your children for your greed, that's your own stupid shit. I can't help you for being that fucking retarded. That goddamn greedy. I can't help that. God has to fix people from that. I can only tell you how to discern those that are in it. If they're for adultery, they're in that shit. If they're carrying the name of God, they definitely are in that shit while in adultery. They are naysayers, liars. They will snake, swarm, squirm any freaking way, even you as God's name to get whatever the hell they want. Period. It's not hard to see. Taste the fruit. For you cannot get evil fruit from a bad tree. Uh, 11. If you forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death, and those that are ready to be slain. So, if you faint in the day of adversity, and your strength is small, and you forbear to deliver them that are drawn to death, and those that are ready to be slain. For instance... You marry, you go to court, you were committing adultery, you brought strangers in, and now you have an idol from the stranger to bend your spouse's neck down, to throw them in prison. This is being dragged to death. If you say, in verse 12, if you say, behold, we knew it not, does not the one that ponders the heart consider it? And he that keeps your soul, does not he know? And shall not he render to every person according to their works? If you're an adultery, using legal law of all to steal the kids, you are a witch building an idle candy fucking house that's killing the bread trail, insulting God's name and blasphemy. And no matter how much you deny the air in front of your face, like, uh, Sirah and Wisdom of Solomon say, If you say, Behold, we didn't know. I didn't know. And you're denying the air in front of your face. And they're saying, You're lying. You're in adultery. You're still in the kids. You are okay with this shit. You are bringing in strangers to destroy us. You say, Oh, it's not so bad. Calm down. You're trying to pay bills above it, but Ha 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 ha. You should have broken up now. Ha ha ha. You should have paid the bills above. Does not God know? If they know you're denying the air, God knows. Now, why would Franklin describe this serpent, chop it up, and then tell you, united, you stand divided, you will fall? Because Franklin knew the scripture. He knew Solomon. He didn't fucking fall for your degree, shit, idols, all that shit. He went and searched like a faithful, responsible husband and father does. 
to get his children the same liberties, the same freedoms, not fucking adulteries, not goddamn scheming, bro, oh, I don't fuck witchcraft ruled by women, oppressed, fuck you, you kitty fucking cults ruling from couches. We got men and women dying on front lines. We got men, strong men, going to fight orphans and fucking refugees, unarmed. You're telling me they're not raping and fucking them senoritas and senors? If they'll deny a refugee that needs water, water, and a mass exodus through cartel country, unarmed, you're telling me they won't fucking rape them? You're telling me a person that will uphold his bills above and legal law from a stranger to break his own death up won't fuck his kids? That is fucking his kids, you retard! That's casting out half his kids, you fucking lying ass bitches! You're telling me they won't put spouse on kids to get fucked and touched to get what the fuck they want? You're fucking lying! Does God not know? Solomon knows! Isaiah knows! Oppressed by kids, ruled by women. Emily knows bitches rolling from couches getting kids fucked. Genesis knew any film. David knew Philistines. You all bullshit. You fucking death oath covenant breakers. You fucking lying blasphemers. Repent. No matter how much you deny that fucking air, you cannot deny the oath. You cannot deny the good book does not condone you. Does God not know? 13. My son, eat thou honey, because it is good, and the honeycomb which is sweet to thy taste. No death. Honeycomb. No death. The bees all mind their community, they all stay in line, they don't covet, they don't do adultery, they don't put up walls, they don't forsake, they don't cast out, they don't do locusts. It's why John ate locusts and honey from the community, the goodwill nature of life, and that which was nothing but goddamn death that will jump over spouse and children and bring in idols who will consume their own fucking spouse. In front of the children! This is locusts. This is goddamn black magic, but all fucking evil shit. Wake the fuck up. Eat you the honeycomb. Because it is good. The community. Not doing death, though. Not letting, letting other men with idols rule over your family. Not letting others come into your, your community. Your vow. These are wolves in sheep's clothing. Any man that ever told you he is with Christ and preaches and teaches and says he's with Christ is a wolf in his sheep clothing, a liar to the faith, a betrayer of God, a wolf in his sheep clothing. For any man of Christ would have supported the family to reconstruct it. He would have remained faithful. He would have built the honeycomb. 14. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto your soul. Knowledge of wisdom unto your soul. Fear the Lord God is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. Fear the Lord God. Hold to your vows. Hold to the truth. Repent back to God. This is wisdom for your soul. The honeycomb. So if you take another bee's spouse and kids using Baal, breaking your own death oath, casting out, that's not life. This is your soul. Your children are your soul. Your wife is your soul. Your husband's your soul. I don't give a fuck how many years it's been. This is God. He doesn't care for time frames. Or fucking idols. Or sin. Hosea 6.6 6, It is steadfast loyalty that I require and the knowledge of God and not that of Sunday attendance, bills above sacrifice, bullshit. Steadfast loyalty I require. Truth and Morsha. So when you do evil shit, this is your soul. You're breaking the honeycomb. Death. Adultery is death. To God it is the equivalent of leaving your wife on the battlefield so the enemy can ravage her is putting away the wife. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto your soul when you 
have found it. Then there shall be a reward, and that expectation shall not be cut off. When you understand the cornerstone of truth to build your house on community, on fidelity, not teaching the kids infidelity in God's name. I don't understand how y'all do that. You can do all that goddamn shit without God's name. Without the name of Christ. You fucking wicked bitches. You can see there is fidelity, Christ, and I'm not that. That would save the kids. That would save their minds, their souls, and their hearts from believing that Christ is actually for infidelity, hating of the community, of God, of Cornerstone, of the first gift of God. You can save your kids, but you would rather blasphemy them using legal law, idolatry of men to destroy the honeycomb. Your honeycomb, given to you by God. Eat of this. Uh, uh, only, only be carried away by your own spouse, uh, the wife of your youth. Why should you rest in another's bosom? Why should you rest with another that, that you're made to come up from youth with? Um, as God says, whatever you're looking for while in adultery, you're not going to find it. It's a goddamn lie. God flat out tells you this. You're in a goddamn lie. You're in adultery. In no wise are you getting anything from me but more death. Hence, they justify themselves off idols. They do the pageantry, the dressing the dead of the mummy, the dressing of the dead in Egypt, the works. I work hard. I pay bills. They do bills above. They do all legal law to destroy their family. They are goddamn wicked, evil, unrepentant so. Unrepentance is the key. This is where they still teach it to the kids, and they will not sit down to suffer, like Christ says, to suffer to get the kids to him. The truth. The truth is simply this. Kids, I'm not a Christian. I'm a lying adulterer. I'm a coward that forsook my wife, according to the Bible. I can't keep my word. I serve Baal and Beelzebub. I work hard. God is not with me. Bam. You just suffered to get your kids Christ. That's a blessing according to Christ. To God. And they're not liars. You are. And that's what I mean. You have to teach them the honeycomb. You broke it. You won't return to it. You won't mend it. You won't stand fast. You're a fucking betrayer. Tell them. Christ is not a betrayer, kids. I am. Christ is not for infidelity. He calls all men to remain faithful to the cross. He doesn't give a fuck about a bitch rubbing your back, sucking your dick, buying you, getting you dinner, cleaning your... He doesn't give a fuck about that shit. He told you that with Martha. Martha, 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 you toil all the day long. None of that shit matters. But attending at my feet, bowed down at my word, at God's word, that's what matters. But you're exalted in Martha's fucking work. Building a tomb for your fucking kids. So shall the knowledge of wisdom, 14, so shall the knowledge of wisdom be done to your soul. Hence the deep pit, the dark pit that Proverbs talks about. Any person that takes another man's wife, as it says, cannot return from that deep pit. They're goddamn ignorant. Wisdom does not dwell with a fucking adulterer blaspheming the commands of God Most High. She does not do it. No knowledge. No, I don't give a fuck how many degrees they got of their doctor. If they're the president, they're fucking dumb. So says the Holy Scripture. And in other lie, they lie. They swear to death and lie. So shall it be done to your soul, the honeycomb. If you don't take another man's wife and teach destruction to your children, so shall it be done to your soul. That's what he's saying. My son, 13, my son, eat not thou the 
eat you the honey, because it is good, and the honeycomb which is sweet to the taste. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be done, be to your soul. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be to your soul. When you have found it, then there shall be a reward, and an expectation shall not be cut off. Now, note this. The honeycomb is your oath, your family, the cornerstone, faith, proof, demonstration of God. 15. Lay not wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous, and spoil not his resting place. You're to rest in the works of God. Your family, the word, the oath, the covenants you've taken uh, to stand fast with the Lord God. Uh, and so you're not to lay and wait against the dwelling of the righteous. Them that are remaining faithful to their, their wives, their children, who are remaining faithful to God. Um, the poor righteous, as Solomon says, they use they use kitty fucking games, uh, uh, any film Philistine games. They use legal law compression of drugs. Uh, they use uh, uh, forcing you to pay for insurance, um, forcing you to get degrees. And if you don't have these things, then they rob for you. They lay in wait where there's no contention whatsoever. They literally build nets of fucking idolatries. And any bitch. And any man that is saying they're with God and Christ are key figures to ruin the kids. They literally are striving. They're officers pretty much in the demonic force to tarnish God's name, to teach them infidelity. They are the wicked lying against the righteous dwelling. 16. For a just man falls seven times and rises up again. Seven always means a lot in Hebrew. Uh, this is not a, a certain number. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. Into mischief. They'll create idols and fall into their own idols. Uh, the, the dressing dead of the mummy, the tomb in Egypt. Rejoice not when your enemy falls. And let not your heart be glad when he stumbles. This is again the honeycomb. Because you got your, your honeycomb with your faith to God. Uh, which is through the, the, the word, the, the prophets, through Christ, through the, the blood testimony, the life. You have that honeycomb, just you and the Lord. Then you have your spouse honeycomb. And then you have your children honeycomb. Then you have your, com your family honeycomb uh, outside the spouse and the children. Because the children are outside you and the spouse. Because y'all are one flesh. You'll go through many children, but only one spouse. Uh, that's why it's better to die 30,000 times than it is to lose your spouse. Um, cause you could have 30,000 kids, but only one spouse. And so, so then you have, uh, uh, the kids and then you have your parents and their parents, but nothing is more important than the Lord God, which is how you keep your fidelity to your spouse. So that's the most important honeycomb. And there's no death in this. It's perfect working, always producing sweet savor. Uh, all the commands of God are good. All the commands of Most High are good. They're life. And so, and then so, when you eat that, you learn to be faithful to your spouse in all conditions, all trials. This is good. This is sweet to the soul. Sweet to God. For now you've taken God and applied it to your own self. To your spouse. Um, which is, uh, love. the second commandment is like, undo it. Love your neighbor as yourself. That's not, that's, it's a sifter because self-love is not love. Love is giving. It's agape. It's charity. It's, it's love. It, to truly love your spouse, you have to love them if they're in adultery or they crucify you, which is what Christ proves that only faith in God produces hope and love among men. Hence, faith is the only righteousness that man can do. Fidelity, truth, stand firm, no matter what. And so when you learn to do that with God, you can then love your spouse. When you learn to love your spouse, you can then love your kids to help both you work as shepherds to teach them God, fidelity. And then you learn everything outside of God and your spouse is an enemy to your altar of God, even your children. That all these are tests. Even your spouse is a test against your honeycomb of God. But the core store of this the queen bee of this is faith in God. And that's how you could tell the fruits that come out. Now, if a person will take another man's wife, or he'll forsake his, or vice versa, whatever it be, 
He will cast out the honeycomb. He is a plague, a sickness in the honeycomb, evil fruits to the honeycomb. And that's what he means. Rejoice not when your enemy falls because that's still the fucking honeycomb, homie. It, it doesn't matter if the man took your wife and your children and the cops. If you just pick up and go fucking slay them or, or pray for their demise, don't rejoice in this because this was... Part of your iniquity. You took part in this. You too have been unfaithful. You too helped spread the sickness. You too have cheated. You too have lied to re-crucify Christ. He's saying, don't forget the honeycomb in this. When you correct them, correct them and move the fuck on. We're what we call in the army on the spot corrections. Um, I, I'm a retired army sergeant. What what we used to call on the spot corrections, because you can't cast out your battle buddy. And so if they fall asleep on guard, if they fuck up, show up drunk, they they run in a fight or something, you you bring that fucking ass back. You train them, you correct them, you on the spot correct this shit. But you're all one unit, all one team. Now if an army unit does this, how much the fuck more should a family? And so you can't rejoice when your enemy falls because you're still in a worldly honeycomb, a national honeycomb, a continent honeycomb, a community, a state, uh, uh, a city, a neighborhood, a block, an apartment, a home, a drug, or whatever. There's all these manifestations of honeycombs. And when you hold fast to God in fidelity and truth, you are a good member of this honeycomb. Not that you're good, but by your faith and, and God's righteousness parted unto your belief, your fidelity, then you are a good member of the honeycomb. And it's sweet to your soul. So don't rejoice when others stumble because that's partly your fault. Because somewhere you weren't perfect. And so you're to... to not just cast them down and be what they were, repay evil for evil, but because you're the believer, like, like Paul says, like Christ is the head of the church, so is the man the head of the family. Because Christ knew God because he was the word manifested, he held firm, so he was the forerunner of brother and come. So if the devil comes destroying your family, pulling you apart, legal compression, adulteries, fornications, drugs, uh, any film, uh, any war killing people, shit like that. You can always come back to that, that, that honeycomb and you have to remember, well, you're in it no matter what. So, so in order to stay true to it, you have to stay with the Lord God. Uh, you have to return to that court. Uh, rejoice not when your enemy fall, uh, 18, lest the Lord see it and it displease him and he turn away his wrath from him. What he means is, like I was saying, if you see your enemy fall and you want to obliterate him, if you, if you want his destruction, the Lord turns away his wrath because that's part of your honeycomb. That's part of your honeycomb. Now, this has also been a sifter, and I've seen it work well as sifting, uh, that people will do wicked ass shit. But never reveal. They have a poker face why they do it. They're rejoicing behind their smile. I've seen them do it to others, to me, where they'll watch. And then when nobody's looking, that you know that they'll, they'll crack that smile. They'll do that evil. And they just don't laugh because they're afraid God will turn away the wrath. That's not what it means at all. But it's a great sifter to find them piece of shit. Uh, 2419. And may the Lord bless them. And if... You see something and it makes you laugh. Like you're like, look, I can't help how stupid fucking retarded y'all are teaching blasphemy while having the children walk them down the aisle, marry another man and call it Christian. I can't help you fucking retarded. This is fucking stupid fucking retarded. Who the fuck? Do I, I can't help but laugh. You're fucking dumb as fuck. How the fuck is that the good book? How do you ever believe that man is Christian? Get the fuck out of here. I can't help but laugh. And God laughs at the wicked all day long. And if you're with God, you're going to laugh at the wicked. It's going to come. They, you know, no matter how much they hurt you, how much they plot, when God starts to reveal to you what they're doing, like, like I'm revealing for you, like he's done for me, 
No legal law, but it's fucking retarded, stupid, how fucking dumb they are. And you can't help but laugh. And because of God's righteousness by your faith in it and wisdom teaching you, you're going to laugh. Because these motherfuckers are dumb, dude. Any that serve idols and will break their word oath and covenant to their own family, they're to be pitied. Not hated. Pitied. God hates their sin, but he pities them because they're so fucking dumb. They can't tell their left from their right. They will literally bring in a stranger to destroy their own parent of their own child. They literally do half the devil's work in the subconscious and soul of the child. They literally do all the devil's work to tarnish God's name. It's fucking retarded. Uh, let's the Lord, uh, verse 19. Fret not yourself because of evil men, and neither be thou envious at the wicked. Like I say, you can't help but laugh at them. For the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he knows the end of them. And when you start to see the eternal line of truth, God's invisible hand, through the Bill of Rights, the Declaration, the Freedom Marchers, Civil War, Egypt, Israel, uh, destruction of all these things, and the Gospel, and God's invisible hand working through all their bullshit plots, scheming, stealing, adulteries, and their fucking just weak-ass cowardice they, they become feeble. What they are, they're as helpless as their idols. They're to be pitied. And only killed when God gives you the order directly. Or when your heart convicts you to do so. Because I'm telling you right now, knowing what I know now, if I went back in the past, they come from my kid or my wife, I would have killed them all right there on the fucking spot. Cop, judge, I don't give a fuck what you would have brought. I would have fought for mine like a good shepherd. I would have laid down my life to the fucking death. I would have done what David done. I would have done what a faithful spiritual man done. But I wasn't a faithful spiritual man. I had to lose all that to learn what it is. I had to lose all that to learn what the ancients are talking about. Because anyone that lets uh, anybody remove the parent from the kids is fucking evil goddamn wicked. Because nobody loves that kid more than the parent. I don't give a fuck. What happened in the divorce, or what is going on? Nobody's going to spend the time and the love for that child like the natural parent. So anybody that's against removing them is against the laws of nature, and nature is God intended, which is in the very first paragraph of the Declaration of Independence, which is the national covenant to this nation, to our living God, which is also expressed in the Bible as kill all the fucking heathen that would ever take your children and teach them adulteries and blasphemies, who will not teach them God but wisdom of men. And that's why y'all have all your fucking degrees and all your bills above and all your ball with all your adultery, all your lies, all your blasphemies. You got fucking tunes. Fret not yourself because of the evil, and neither be thou envious at the wicked. So even if they do this to, oh yeah, and you can't be envious for your spouse, and you can't be envious for your children. These are life, blood, testimonies given to you by God. These are God made natural law, laws of nature and nature's God intended. So if a man takes your wife, your family using legal law, compression, backdoor, backsliding, parking down the street, fucking lying coward shit like they did me, it don't matter. Don't envy them pussy motherfuckers. It's a goddamn lie. Everything they do is weak sauce fucking bullshit. It won't stand. They have deceived your spouse into thinking that they are something they completely are not. Any man that would prowl on another man's wife while in divorce going through trials and call himself a Christian is a wolf in sheep's clothing. He's a goddamn liar. Same for a woman, because they are contrary to the whole of the book. Thus, I send them back. Thus, I used to didn't when I wasn't a believer. Thus, don't be envious of them. You can still want your spouse and your children. That's not envy. That's not their spouse. So says the Lord God. They're proven liars who will swear to death and betray their own covenant while using Christ's name. They're not with God. That's not their spouses. They're God-damned 
lying blasphemers. Understand this well. If they come, and they're going to come and say, oh, you're just envious. You can't get over it. Notice how they mock fidelity. Notice how they mock God in oath and the word. Notice how they are back asswards trying to flip shit on you, fucking serpentine, stupid, evil, subtle, sophisticated, complex fucking lies. They mock you for being faithful. They mock your God, your Christ, your apostles, your prophets. All faithful. For there shall be no reward to the evil man, and the candle of the wicked shall be put out. As he was saying in the first seven verses, you got to build your house on the truth. Uh, anything that is vanity, lie, wicked, it all gets done away. It's only but a passing time, a locust trial. My son, 21, my son, fear you the Lord. I'm the king, and meddle not with them that are given to change. I'm the king, the Lord should be your king. Uh... If you are fearing a judge in America, if you're fearing a president, a senator, con these are your public servants. In America, it's different than everywhere in the world. They're your fucking servants. They're just in treason conspiracy while you all play pussy goddamn adults or a coward and won't teach your children their Bill of Rights and Declaration. Y'all are fucking bitches is what you are. Y'all are fucking letting your servants kill your families and rule over you when you're in a constitutional republic government. That is, the whole of the union revolves around the Declaration and the Bill of Rights. And they are searching and seizing you without warrants, which is against the Fourth Amendment, which is the law, the only legal law that cannot be changed or infringed or violated in any way, ever. If you alter the sin, you alter the union. And that's never been done. And so the preamble to the Bill of Rights that says you're free, they have to get warrants, they have to have reasons, that when they come to destroy your family, common law, Seventh Amendment, any suits at common law where the value in controversy shall exceed $20, the right of the people by jury shall be preserved. That is, they're treating your kids like $19.99 for one, two for $9.99, and three for $6.66, while committing treason to deny you your jury of 12. That is, they're playing adulterous, lying, goddamn schemes that don't do the cornerstone of the nation in truth. That is, they would rather do black match witch witchcrafts to get you to swear away Christ and rise for Baal and not hold true to your covenant, to your God. That is, they will do witchcraft in small fucking things. That is, they are untrue, movable, shaky, shifty. That is, they aren't where God is in liberty and freedom. That is, they'll bow your children down to idols they make and they'll never stop making them. And they'll make it where even if you don't have an idol, then they'll rob from you. They'll steal from you. They'll kill you because you didn't serve the idol and go buy one. So they'll take your taxes to build the roads, to maintain them, your sales tax, your work tax. But you can't drive on them. That is taxation without representation. That is slavery of the people. That is only the goddamn rich can drive on the road. That is the only the goddamn rich can do drugs. That is only the goddamn rich by their degree can rule over you. That is, you are stupid as fuck. Because you won't stand in your Bill of Rights, your Declaration, your Gospel, your Tanakh. That was all laid in faithful. Notice how these work together. Faithful. Truth. Oath-keeping. Not oath-breaking, child-fucking schemes, faithful, through blood, guts, sacrifice, child sacrifice, wars, murders, rapes, still standing firm to get you. But notice how every adulterer builds above all paying, lying, degree-holding, man-building person hates it. Because it makes you free from their goddamn nets and schemes. My son, fear you the Lord, who is the king, and meddle not 
with them that are given to change. Them that are given to change that will make an idol to destroy their oath-breaking family. Well, I went to a stranger and he made me this. Ha <laughs> ha, I'm going to take the kids now and I'm good. Tell them for all, I only rose and swore away Christ, but I'm a Christian. A Christian who teaches Christian kids and other Christian men. While committing adultery, swearing away Christ, when it's a direct order that anybody that swears is a no-no, it's straight up from the devil. I'm strange, isn't it? Well, I hope he can teach my kids. I want my wife to marry his son. Ha 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 ha. Maybe he'll still the kids with her. Or I want my daughter to marry his son. And I'm in right. You're going to see how much betrayal and idolatry he's given to change. Notice how he won't change his work. Notice how he won't change his bills above. Notice how he won't change his legal contracts that are ball, that are house buying, for his brick, for his tomb, for his boat, for his house, for his cars, for his 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 feasts. Notice how he won't change that. But he'll change his spouse. His God, his Lord, his command. Twenty two. For their calamity shall rise suddenly. And who knows the ruin of them both? Uh, you already know what that is. There's a day of visitation where God makes your idols come kill you. As Isaiah says, if you want to worship them as gods, then I'll have them rise up to kill you, which is uh, legal law compression for adultery, which is uh, the building of Oklahoma County Jail, prison systems. He, he uses them to destroy you because you bow down to them and teach your children the same. These things also belong to the wise. It is not good to have respect a person and judgment. That is... Um, that is... Most people use it for the poor, the rich. They're wrong. Um, what it means is, in order to have not respect a person in judgment, you ask God what to judge. You ask God to judge it. You you turn to God in faith, and God does judge it. Uh, same way for Christ. Uh, I do not judge. I didn't come to judge. But when I do, it is a righteous judgment. Uh, same for the prophets, apostles, for those that follow the Lord God, the saints. We don't judge. God judges you. We, we didn't say adultery is fucking wicked. God said it. And so it's wicked. We didn't say that, that we should hold fast to our covenants and remain faithful to our family and our home. God said it. It doesn't fucking matter what y'all do. We take our judgments with no respect of person. But any adulterer, any fornicator, bills above all pay a man who doesn't mind lying will say, Oh, well, this person gave me an idol. He'll respect a stranger against that that he swore to death to protect and teach his children the same. 24. He that says unto the wicked, You are righteous. Again, you already know what that is. Christian men that are trying to say that they're with Christ while in adultery, serving bills above and below. Wicked. Men. That are righteous? No. Him so the people curse, and nations shall abhor him. Meaning God is going to grind you down. Because you wouldn't suffer to get your kids the truth. The, the millstone ran by the ass is going to grind you down to dust so the whole world knows about it. It's better you suffer and get the kids the truth that you're not with God, that you're not with Christ, that you're in contrary to the teachings of all the Bible, that you are in no fucking wise representing a saint or God. 25. But to them that rebuke him shall be delight, and a good blessing shall come upon them. That's what I'm doing right now. I don't care who you are. Either confess you're not with God, or confess that, or repent. Hey, either way, it doesn't matter. God's going to do what God does. And this is not a lie. You are. This isn't a coward. This is followed by blood. I mean, I've done three years in prison myself proving this shit. And I plan on doing more. I, know, I, I plan on following God wherever God leads me. And I got no doubt more of it will be there. 
26. Well, I have doubt because God may do something. I never know. My faith is in God. To remain faithful. 26. Every man shall kiss his lips that gives a right answer. A true answer. Unless you're an adulterer. Unless you're looking... Um, if you're looking for wicked answer, adultery, uh, for riches, then what he's saying is if you think those things, if that's what you're looking for, that's the right answer you'll get. You'll kiss those lips. Um, but a person that speaks true, everybody shall know. And, and no matter what it is, on their lips is tattooed the words of truth. Um, 27. Prepare thy work without... And make it fit for yourself in the field. And afterwards, build your house. He's saying, uh, don't rush off and call yourself a Christian. Don't rush off, get baptized. Um, he's saying you can believe in God and learn. And then when you're ready to make that commitment to pick up the name, th then you're ready to follow God. Like Abraham wandering out in the wilderness through Egypt and all that until God established him with Isaac and all that. It's a trial of faith. Uh, 28. Be not a witness against your neighbor without cause, and deceive him not with your lips. Uh, to commit adultery, to say, Oh, I'm afraid of you. I only got your wife and kids to use legal law. But oh, it's it's um, to, to judge them uh, for doing free choice. It's all witchcrafts, idolatries. Um, without a cause, is uh, your cause should always be God as a faithful man. Let God dispute. You just answer true. The battle and the victory of the Lord. 29. Say not I will do so to him as he has done to me. I will render to every man according to his work. The Lord will render to every man according to his work. Um, by the Lord's account of the man. So what you do is you only answer to God. Whether it's to slay or not slay. Because there is... There is people in here that kill man woman and child and animals they didn't do no wrong but god gave the order that's the man not answering saying i'll render unto you what you render whether it's good or bad you suffer if the command is suffer you suffer if it's kill you kill like all the fathers and faithful men and women before you you don't let no fucking culture no no anything they make uh, deter you. Even the Declaration of Independence says that it is not the right of the people, but it is their duty to secure freedom and liberty for their children. If you must pick up arms to stop these goddamn Baal witchcraft adulterers that will kidnap kids saying they're not kid fucking while they're goddamn lying, you say, it's bullshit. It says it is not the right of the people, it is the duty of the people to abolish such forms. Say not uh, uh, 30. I went, it's, and it's not you that determines this. If they are taking away your kids, throwing you in prison for free choice, they're fucking, wait, they goddamn took it to the most extreme evil goddamn point possible. They destroyed a family for no victim, no accuser, only to make money in a rich goddamn scheme to feed their fake fucking gods and their idols. They took it to the most fucking extreme blasphemy there is. They destroy a family for an idol, a man-made. What the fuck? So when you say, I'll fucking kill you if you come for mine, they, you're not extreme, they fucking are. They're the goddamn, it's subtle. It's, they, they just do it subtly. Shh, calm down now. It's silent. It's witchcraft. They, they'll they flash idols. They'll say certain words like, oh, that doesn't matter. The death of covenant doesn't matter. I made a new idol that says you don't get to have your kids now. Settle down. Don't cuss. Don't freak out. Why are you freaking out, sir? Somebody detain that man. Arrest him. Put him in cuffs. Throw him in jail. He does not agree with my family destroying idol that I have made in such a subtle way. You know how the devil loves it. Real subtle. Sophisticated, cunning, you know, like Southern White Bride. Oh, why well, I would never, darling. And then go out back beating little kids, calling them niggas, putting them in chains. Fucking evil bitch ass motherfuckers. Oh, no, I'm with Christ. You could tell by my subtlety. No, Genesis 3 says you're a goddamn adultering lying fucking bitch. Wake the fuck up. 
30. I went by the field of the slothful, and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. What is understanding? Fear of the Lord God, not obedience to idols. That is Oklahoma County Jail. That is the poor being robbed. That is the orphans and refugees getting fucking raped and stopped at the border. That is them searching and seizing all your property for just not obeying idolatries. The field of the vineyard are the slothful. That is adulterers saying they're with Christ. They're slothful to tend to God's table. 31. And lo, it was all grown over with thorns. And nettles had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. How did this chapter begin? By building on God. And verse 30. And the stone wall thereof was broken down, because they were slothful to tend to their oaths, to the truth. They'd rather teach blasphemies and murders to the kids to teach them to shoot twos, plant seeds, tell goddamn lies, moved by times, which is a man-made invention. By the time clock to, to plant seeds of fucking fear and lies, to plant pulleys, set pulleys, to, uh, to tell lies. All the wicked goddamn shit they teach this to the kids because they're slothful. They're busy playing with fucking kids in kiddie pools. Getting people touched. Getting kids touched so they can rob and steal from men that work their whole lives. So they can bring in strangers and partake in their kiddie fucking games. So they can be the literally the wicked witch in the idle house. 32. Then I saw. And I considered it well. I looked upon it, and I received instruction. Yet a little sleep, yet a little slumber, yet a little folding of the hands to sleep. He's not talking about bedtime sleep. He's talking about you not waking up to God, to their idols, to men playing your fucking kings. He's talking about you being a goddamn ass and an ox, literally the mind of one, not a representation of it, but the mind of one. Your worth is nothing but a fucking animal that plows a field. You boast in your slave. You never tend to the high things like he said. A fool. Wisdom is too high for a fool. Put a fool back in the vineyard. Put him back to plowing. Put his hand to the plow. As the wisdom book says, Ben Sarah and Solomon say, what does a wise man have to do with plow on the field? He's not a fucking brute. He's not just going to go day after day teaching his kids to be a slave after slave after slave. He's not going to teach his kid to be fucking Pharaoh's bitch. That's fucking, I guess, the wicked witch sacrificing kids to the idol goddamn. Hey, kid, you were born. You're made by God. Love Christ. By the way, make sure you tend the fill 40 hours a week, 50, 60. If you got to, if you got lots of bills, be sure to pay bills. But that's not the fuck you were born for. Shut the fuck up. Every goddamn time a nation builds up shit like that, it gets fucking obliterated. Every fucking goddamn time. Never does it work. It's a tomb for the children. It's working in the field and then coming home lazy and tired so you turn on the TV because you think you actually fucking did something. Which is boasting in Cain and Pharaoh and your work. You ain't done a goddamn thing. All of it will be gone before your children reach 10 more years. 20 more years. Every fucking goddamn thing you do will be nothing but leaving you. Prisons, chains, guns, idle rule, poor to too poor to afford the degrees. And you'll leave them nothing of their Bill of Rights, their covenant to God and the Declaration of Independence. None of their holy scriptures. None of their Quran. None of them tonight. None of the living God in faith. No fidelity. All goddamn lie. Shit works. Work hard. Commit adultery. I'm a God. I just a nice present for you, kids. Ha 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 ha. Want a new card? Can't do it.
the LSU buy that insurance now. Ha ha ha. I know you've been saving for years. I know your income tax they've been charging you goes to the roads. But who cares? Pay their company too. Ha ha ha. So you make a fucking slave of them. You're a piece of shit fucking ignorant bitch. Wake up. So shall your poverty come as one that travails, hollers, yells, screams, shouts, Not my babies! Not my babies! We didn't mind me doing that trap when we were together! I raised them kids! Not my babies! Mama, no! So will your poverty come as one that travails, and your want as an armed man. Everyone's guilty of sin, as the Quran was saying, um, as the Proverbs was saying, as Quran says in 3155, as it says in 389, and under God belongs the dominion over the heavens and the earth, and God has the power to will anything. Um, oh, 187. God, he bowed you. Make it known to all mankind and do not conceal it. The truth, fidelity, God. But they, but they cast their pledge behind their backs and bartered it away for a trifling gain. Sound familiar? It's the same thing that Paul says. They commit covenant breaking. They deny the air in front of their faces, Solomon says. Witchcraft and small things. It's goddamn evil wicked. So all men are born under this. No matter if you made a deal or a covenant, you're fucking retarded if you think you can get in a, a, a thieving, lying, fucking betraying guild of all on bills above and think you should hold firm to that fucking cut. You're fucking retarded if you think you should hold that covenant to the truth one that you joined them to lie. They're liars. As the wisdom of Solomon says, all you poor ones at the bottom that don't have millions of dollars, they're literally used this shit to bring you in, destroy your spouse, and then they fucking kill you. They mock you. They try to kill the righteous one first, and then they kill you mocking you. Say, you don't fucking betray your family, you stupid bitch. We don't do that shit. And notice how them you take covenants with have their spouses when they're in the upper echelons of money and title. You're the fucking goddamn idiot, and you're the game to them. The more they keep you away, the more every day they go on keeping your children away. Look in the upper echelon. They don't do a dog. They mock you. You're a fucking reproach. You're as stupid as fuck because you won't return to your spouse, which is the whole test of faith. So in essence, they are going to... Then they try to bring the righteous to a shameful end by kitty touching, like it says in Solomon 2, but ruin this shit. And when they don't fucking do this shit, but they got you to believe that this is wrong somehow because you're a fucking idiot. And every man's an idiot. They only have this knowledge to destroy. They're fucking idiots too. They only got that knowledge to destroy because they grew up in the money and the destruction and the games of it, the degrees. They knew that they were going to play your prince and your ruler to, to subject you in goddamn lies. They knew what they were doing. That's why they don't commit adultery because they know that it brings on the wrath of God. But they get you to do it in every fucking way they possibly can. Why? Because God uses it as a test of your faith. Because whether you're rich or poor, you know what the fuck a death note is. You know what the fuck family is. And, and no matter if it's your mama, your daddy, your uncle, your brother, the whole fucking world. You are to keep that oath. And when found in error, you're to return. And you'll see that they do this in the upper echelons. The millions and mil billionaires and shit. The millionaires. They mock you in infidelity. And they use you as pawns. 
and they murmur, backbite, and they say, well, they fucked that kid, or they killed that person, or they fucking did this, and they'll do this to divide you from your spouse, and while they do that behind your back, they're fucking mocking you. That fucking stupid bitch. They went the whole fucking... I mean, come on. Like, we're gonna try... Are they actually think we should... No! They don't do that shit! They're not fucking stupid! They're not gonna teach their fucking kids to be goddamn slave-minded, ignorant, fucking family-betraying fools! They're not, they don't make slaves! They get you to make fucking slaves! The first rule of all slave making is to dispatch the family unit. Why? Because then they have no cause for fight. Repent, stupid shits. Everyone is found under this condemnation. Repent, return to God, don't envy the wicked, you already know what they do, get mad all you want, don't kill unless you have direct order from God, suffer enduringly as all your prophets and patriarchs before you, if they come for your family, I'm going to tell you now, I'll fucking kill somebody if I go back, but now that she's, and make no mistake, if God tells me to go kill that motherfucker, I'll do it, the same as I'll suffer for him if God tells me to do so, so my advice for you is to turn to the living Lord God, which is the advice of the Declaration of Independence, the covenant of this nation says, turn to God. Plead to the supreme judge of the whole world for the rectitude of your cause. That's your national covenant. Hold truth self-evident. You know what a lie is. You know what oath-breaking is. And you, once you take your community first one, there is no other one done to God. As long as the other person was in it too. So, and that was their first one. So... So that's generally the way it does it because it's part of the honeycomb. Um, uh, that's what your whole Bible says is follow the living Lord God. It's what Moses did at the mount. When he got the Ten Commandments, he smashed them and only followed the first. Then God had him make the second set. He wrote on that and give it to them. Why? Because the second set's profane to see what they'll choose. He even made it less. Wasn't even divinely carved out. Moses's was. He still smashed them and chose the first command. That's what you're to do. And the second set is to see what you'll do with it. It's always been that. Serve and worship the Lord thy God alone. This is a living Lord God. And you always know you're with them when you're in the truth. And if you're not in the truth, you're not accepted. You're still playing God. You can't play God and come to God. You have to stop playing God to turn to God. So being a goddamn adulterer and a second death though saying you're with God, you're a fucking liar. So says the Holy Script. So says the living Lord God. So says direct command of Paul. From the living Lord. This is from God, not me. Only time he ever says directly from God is on adultery. You can't do it. Christ says the same. The whole religions around the world say the same. Take the name out of your mouth, save the children. Suffer some fucking what to get them some sense of integrity of God. And then that's you might save your own soul. At least save the children's, because you really seriously don't give a fuck about yours. Or the child's, because you taught them to hate their own fucking parent. It's a promise from God to a long life. Honor your parents. So if you're teaching them to fucking hate up, you're fucking killing them. You're fucking retarded. God's not wrong. You are. God is not incorrect. You are. God's commands are not evil. Yours are. Test the fruits. They're not hard to see. What offers eternal life, liberty, freedom, uh, um, trust, fidelity, loyalty, duty, respect, selfless service, honor, integrity, personal courage. One offers a steadfast, true life. The other offers bowing down to every goddamn idol a man makes with every whim that he makes. And it will be unending. Hence, you're given to change. 
Virtues are powers that Christ came in. And virtues are gifts from heaven to let you know if you're going home to heaven. No lie. That's what the scripture tells you. Virtues are a gift from God to you. To let you know you're going home to heaven. Truth. Fidelity. Virtue. Faith. Hope. Love. Loyalty. Duty. Respect. Selfless service. Honor. Integrity. Courage. To face a fucking lying goddamn man in treason theft and I shut the fuck up. Why the fuck are you de- Look, every man's born under this. All I can say is ask God. Because I wait patiently, get thrown into prisons, beatings. Um, I've been made to act in violence one time. And that was just pop the man in the face, wait on the cops. They gave me a ride home. No lie. Thought I was going to do four or five years for it. A 72-year-old man. And I'm a trained combat killer. I like to fight. But I get my teeth knocked out. God makes me stand. But I've worn a man for three, four years. And then he says some shit about my wife doing some shit. And God says I must act. His life is in my hands. So I pop him in the face. Not very hard at all. But when he went to react with his rich, prissy-ass, goddamn lying, scheming, fucking fake, ball, all legal law, compression bullshit they do, I put him right in his fucking place. I told him he insults me, my wife, my marriage, my God one more time. I'll fucking cut his throat. And when the cops got there... They gave me a ride home. But then there was another time when I stood for my wife and my son. I did years in prison. They call it stalking. Trying to call to find out where your kid is. While a stranger, adulterous fucking Christian is teaching him a goddamn lie that he's a Christian. While committing goddamn adultery and ball sacrifice. While I'm a man of foreign war. And this is a bills above paying lying fucking Christian. Teaching my son the same evil goddamn shit. So I stood. Protesting. Peaceably. Did years in prison. So I never know what God's gonna do. I just ask God. So I recommend you do the same thing. Keep the faith. Uh, know you're not alone. Do it for the children, man. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Suffer for the children. It ain't hard. Stop getting them fucked to get what you want. You and your little witchcraft. Like, I've fucking seen y'all do it, dude. I've seen this shit. Where they literally hypnotize the children. Seen it. They fucking know what they do. Now repent. You're nothing new. This has been done in Israel. No, Read in Judges and Kings. It's been done in Chronicles. It's been done in Israel. And God sent a prophet, just like I'm doing right now. And they repented. Literally saved the nation. And multiple times, actually. No lie. And so God, that God raises up this little minor prophet. And he sends, tells them all to repent. And they do. And God forgives them. So it's not fucking doing it. Clearly it went on with Franklin during the revolution. Clearly it was going on in the revolution. Because they were trying to stop the people from paying attention to the king. Stealing everybody. Destroying fucking families with their goddamn adultery idols. It's a distraction. Cut that fucking shit out. Fucking the kids, that ain't shit, bitch. Wake the fuck up. They are murdering you. They are building ovens of great proportions of prisons to enslave your fucking kids. We're not talking fucking touching one kid. We're talking the mass fucking genocide of a mass exodus of the Latin American people. We are talking the complete enslavement of everybody that doesn't have money that's made by the rich banks. Wake the fuck up. It is exactly what Solomon says. They use their degrees, legal compression to ruin the youth. In Wisdom of Solomon 2. To literally get kids fucked. Read Wisdom of Solomon 2 to let no flower go by to use witchcraft and small things so they can legally compress you. Just like Isaiah says, they use uh, children to oppress and women to rule. 
just like Ammo says, from their fucking couches, they judge men of war. Playing their pussy fucking games, not a goddamn one of them will face it, stand in the way, say it outright. Because it ain't fucking right, it's backbiting, murmuring shit. Wake up. Uh, God bless you. Uh, I pray God find you faithful. All of us. Um, Merry Christmas Eve. Uh, may the Lord be with you. And your family. Uh, remain you faithful.